Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at vectors and iterators in Rust. If this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos, make sure to check out the link in the description below to get the entire playlist of this video series. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at what Rustlings has to say today. So I've already executed Rustlings watch in the Rustlings repository and we can see that we have a compilation error in vec1.rs, collections vec1.rs. And we see that there's a syntax error here and then some other complaints by the compiler. We also see that there's a function array and vec, which actually expects a tuple but seems to be returning a unit type at the moment. So let's just see what the hint says. In Rust, there are two ways to define a vector. One way is to use the vec new function to create a new vector and fill it with the push method. We've actually done that in a previous video of this series. And then the second way is actually way simpler. We use the vec macro and define our elements inside of those square brackets that we can see in the hint right here. Okay, so that's all we have. We should also check out the chapter that's linked in the hint. We are not going to do that now. Let's take a look at the file. So I'm going to run vim exercise collections and then we have vec1.rs. Okay, so here we see there is a comment that says your task is to create a vector which holds the exact same elements as in the array A. Okay, and then here we see we have a function array and vec. Array and vec takes an array of four values and a vector of i32. So we have a bunch of numbers. Just as a quick reminder, arrays and vectors are actually very similar. The main difference between these two is that vectors can grow in size while arrays are static in size. That's also why we can see that the first argument of this function expects an array or a list of exactly four values. Okay, and then we see we have our array A with 10, 20, 30, 40, and then there is the variable V, which is where we should declare our vector with the vector macro. And then we're returning a tuple of A and V in this case. And then down here's a test that says we're calling array and vec, which returns our tuple of our array and our vector. And then it checks whether these two things are equal. Okay, let's make this work. Basically, as the hint said, we can just use the vec macro. We haven't really talked about macros yet, but for now, let's just accept that macros are functions that are expanded at compile time. So in other words, they're somewhat code generators, if you will. So when we do something like vec and then we give it the square brackets, this says, okay, we're, we want to create a vector here and when we run the compiler, it's actually going to take this line of code and it expands it to the actual vector code that we had to write otherwise in case that macro wouldn't exist. So that would be probably vec and then colon colon new and then whatever we want to do with it. In this particular case, we want to put in 10, 20, 30 and 40 because we want this vector to look exactly the same as the array. Again, the equivalent of that would be let v and then equals uh, vec new and then we would need to make this thing probably mutable and then we can say v dot push and then 10 and then we would do v dot push and 20 and so on and so forth however since there's a macro that does exactly that for us there's no need for us to actually write this code out obviously this only works when we know the initial values that should go into the vector. This could also be an empty vector. Okay, so I'm gonna save that and see if that compiles. Okay, cool, this is doing the trick. Let's remove that comment and move on to the next one. We have a failing test in collections vec2.rs. Let's see what the hint says. The hint says i is each element from the vec as they are being iterated. Can you try multiplying this? And hint two, check the suggestion from the compiler error. Okay, let's just go back and open up that file vec2.rs. And we saw that there was a failing test. So I'm gonna go and take a look at the test first. There's a bunch of things going on here that we haven't seen before. So first of all, we are creating a vector here. I'm gonna talk about what exactly is going on here in a second. And then we're creating another vector from that originally created vector. 
and the vec loop function. The vec loop function is defined up here. And obviously there's a to do which says fill this up so that each element in the vec v is multiplied by two. So we need to do that in a second. And then we have these two vectors. And then we see that there's an assertion which says, okay, we expect that whatever we get from vec loop is the same as, and then we're iterating over our original vector. We map every value of that vector to a new value, which is multiply that value by two. And then we collect that back into a vector again. So the iter function here is an API that allows us to guess what iterate over values of a vector. And then once we have an iterator type, we can actually use these adapter functions like map, for example, and there's also others like filter and take. In fact, these two we see up here. And what these functions do, they actually get called on every single value that the iterator provides. Now, once all of these adapter functions are called, we can call collect on them, which will turn the iterator back into a vector. And here we also see a new kind of syntax. It's called Tuberfish syntax, where we explicitly say, okay, when we collect the values, what we want to create from that is a vec of i32. The reason this is done is because theoretically we could collect the values from an iterator into other types as well. So the compiler is in this case actually not able to infer the type by itself. That's why it's specified here explicitly. Okay, so now we know we want to create a vector that is the same as the original vector, just that every single value in it is multiplied by two. And that's exactly what the to-do says, fill this up so that each element in the vec v is multiplied by two. We see here that the original vector is a vector of i32, and then there is this range form syntax here. So range form type is a range, from a starting point to an end point. In this case, it's starting at one, and then the dot dot implies that it goes infinitely far. This is saying from one till infinity, and from those values that we get, we filter out all of the values that can be divided by two, and then from those values, we're only taking the first five, and then we collect them back into a vector. So at this point, we have a vector of 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And this is also reflected here in the comment because the vector that we need to create from our vec loop function says that the values in the newly created vector have to be 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, which is the multiplied value. Okay, so how do we make this work? So vec loop takes a mutable vector of i32 and then it iterates over that with iter mute. Iter mute is in a way the same as iter, just with the difference that it iterates over mutable references to each value. When we access i in here, what we get is a reference to an i32 and specifically the one that we're iterating over at this point. And because it's a reference, we can actually change it in place. We want to multiply it by two. So what we can do is we can say i is equals to i multiplied by two. However, if we run this, we will probably see that, yeah, there's an error here. The compiler says that we're trying to multiply a mutable reference to i32. But in order to perform the multiplication, we actually need an i32. So we need to dereference the referenced value. The compiler also again gives us a little hint here. It says we can use the asterisk sign to get our i32 by dereferencing i. And it tells us exactly what that looks like. So in other words, I can put an asterisk symbol here. This is gonna dereference i in that iteration and that value we're going to multiply by two and assign that back to i. And because we can't assign the resulting i32 to a reference, we need to dereference i here as well. I'm gonna save that and see if that's compiling. Yep, that's doing the trick. Now, one thing that we can improve here actually is make this a little shorter we can say that dereferenced i is multiplied equals to, so this is a shorthand syntax for what we've done just now. Saving that. And we see this is still compiling. Okay, removing the comments and moving on to the next one. 
Okay, so this was the first little video about collections, specifically vectors and arrays. I know there was something very magic going on with the dereferencing syntax, but don't worry about it for now. Um, I'm going to create another video that explains dereferencing in more detail. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.